And we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Lore Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. So let's kind of reflect on what we talked about right quick. We talked about our WWE NXT Great American Bash Week 1 review. We talked about our AEW Dynamite preview. We talked about, we compared AEW uh, All In and also WWE SummerSlam. We also checked back on one, one of the most, uh, a couple of, uh, you know, memorable SummerSlam moments in my lifetime. Obviously, if you guys have one to share in the chat, make sure you hit it up. So before, you know, without further ado, let's talk about our fifth and final segment. Our we, our Wednesday's weekly, sorry, a lot of alliteration there. Our weekly, Wednesday's weekly wrestling news. Oh, God, I just love how I just fail on live TV. It's so great. Anyway. So, guys, in the wrestling news today, CM Punk says that airing his fight back in all back all in at Wembley Stadium last year was kind of it was kind of ugly. It was kind of ugly for the um, for both him, also the people involved in it. Jack Perry, also you saw some of Joe in the background. You saw Tony Khan. Uh, you know, you saw the guys go at it, and uh, you know, that was on the ten percent. I thought it was stupid, you know, and I remember, um, you know. Recently, you know, when I was a fan of, I've always kind of been a fan of AEW, but like when I really honestly started watching it, I remember um, when the Young Bucks were creating this faction of the elite, you know, they just wanted to do everything they can to make AEW not about CM Punk anymore. And I think this was a thousand and ten percent the reason why they did it. And I, I just thought it looked bad. It looked bad. And they tried to make it look bad for CM Punk. They tried so damn hard. But I think fans at the same time, they kind of already know what kind of guy Punk is, you know? So in reality, you kind of made AEW look bad. You made the Young Bucks look bad. And, like, you made this newly found, you know, elite faction kind of look bad. But more or less, you've kind of got people to hate your confidant there, the the TNT, uh, AEW TNT champion there, Jack Curry. I know as soon as I found out that, you know, the reason why... um, CM Punk did leave AEW was because of Jack Perry. And, you know, after hearing, um, I was listening to the Busted Open podcast and uh, Bubba Ray was talking about how disrespectful Jack Perry was to all the guys in the locker room. Basically, you know, young, act like his sh- don't stink. And, you know, that's that's not cool, man. That's not cool. And expect, I think Tony Khan kind of made the wrong decision there. Got rid of the wrong guy. But, you know, CM Punk, you know, ever since he made it back to this guy's a walking human highlight reel. And I'm not just talking about inside the ring. I'm talking about, like, this guy can carry a show just based on his own, like, actions. Like, it's crazy. Like, when you're watching Monday Night Raw, you know, it facilitates around a lot of what CM Punk is doing. A thousand and ten percent. And he and himself could be a main event. He and himself could bring somebody over. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's just nuts. And, you know, I kind of feel like they aired the footage to kind of rub it in CM Punk's face. Because at the time... Uh, this happened, you know, back in 2023, I believe, September 2023, when he got released, I think. Like, you see him coming back. Obviously, you know, there's still a lot of uh, baggage between him and what happened with WWE and the pipe bomb. But I feel like they kind of use this as like, you know, kind of like a way to kind of rub it in, you know, because they waited so long for it to happen. A lot of wrestling news media and a lot of AEW wrestlers were like, you know what? I don't think this is such a good idea. I don't think this is, you know. And of course, like they weren't able to call him by name, but everybody knew, you know, what, you know, who CM Punk is. They know what he looked like. And they're like, okay, and you know, they're 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 doing this to kind of I feel like they're doing this to try to spite CM Punk. Uh there was actually, you know, rumors backstage in AEW that the Young Bucks didn't even want to do it. And why would they? Ever since they became EVPs, you know. I don't want to say they were kind of bidding and doing the dirty work for Tony Khan because they love and respect their boss, which by all means is, you know, that's relative. And also that's very, that's legit. You know what I mean? Tony Khan is a very, very good owner. Nowhere like Vince McMahon. He cares about his superstars. He wants his superstars to flourish and stuff like that. And, you know, definitely all power to him. Thousand percent. One thing, if you guys leave this podcast, one thing, you know, you guys should know that I 1,010% respect Tony Khan as an owner. Um, and I don't know. I just think that whole revealing it, I think you didn't really have to do it. I honestly thought a 1,000. Then you saw Jack Perry come back 
and everybody automatically just uh started hating him and it was just you know maybe they're the reason why i hate jack perry maybe you know maybe that footage was the reason why i was like you know what because i'm you know i used to love jungle boy used to love jungle boy but then you have i don't know it's it's it was just all bad just something that probably should have never surfaced but you know cm punk saying that you know the way they AEW did it and the way they uh they aired the footage it was just ugly and a thousand and ten percent it's it's true a thousand ten percent it's a thousand and ten percent true that it was it was ugly. It was terrible. It was un the I think the key word here is unnecessary. All right, Roxanne Perez calls out Julie and also Stephanie Stephanie Bacure after uh, uh, week one of the Great American Bash. You look, I love Roxanne Perez more than the other, but you know you have these two just dy like dynamic superstars. These girls that can absolutely kick your ass. But uh, Roxanne, you gotta admire the way Roxanne Perez is inside the ring. You gotta admire her uh, her promo skills, and like I, I, I love it. I gotta be honest. The way Roxanne Perez goes out there, and she's like, you know what? I'm not the biggest. I'm not the strongest, but I can go out there and I can show you why I can kick your ass. You know, let me hit some pop rocks. But Julia has been waiting in the wings for NXT. It's been rumored that she's actually had some injuries to deal with before she moves on to her. Um, to a full actual WWE NXT um, uh, debut, which is probably the right way to go. And of course, we have the most, the very, very, very impressive uh, international wrestling superstar and Stephanie Bacure. I think Bacure definitely is going to be the one to take the championship off of Roxanne Perez. I don't know. I, 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 I definitely feel like that's going to be Especially heading toward, you know, once when they debut in the CW, they're going to need uh, a lot of, uh, you know, that international kind of, uh, you know, kind of that star appeal that uh, Stephanie McCurr brings to the championship. Uh, but, you know, Julia is someone as well that should not be taken lightly. She can definitely hold the championship, you know, up to high standards and, you know, keep it prestigious. So 1,000 to 10%, it's, you know, I think Roxanne Perez is kind of, tagging the tail on the snake that's going to come back and bite you back all right next we have nick nemeth in the news saying that he has his sights on taking on aj styles for the tna world heavyweight championship i don't want to be the one to say that i told you so but i told you no i'm just kidding but uh you know the moment that nxt started this collaboration with wwe no it started this collaboration with tna I kind of knew something was going to give. You know, you haven't really seen AJ Styles. You've seen him on, you know, dark matches, and he was in Tokyo. Obviously, he was part of New Japan Professional Wrestling. Pretty popular out there. But Nick Nemeth wants to beat the best. I still think that Moose is going to kind of come hunting for his rematch clause. But at the same time, you have us, you know, you have AJ Styles. When he made it up to WWE, he won some championships. I'm not going to dispute that fact. Had some memorable matches like with John Cena at Royal Rumble of 2016. That was, no, 2017. That was amazing. That was one of the most incredible matches I've ever seen in my life. And now you just kind of see him floating around. And it's just, you know, much like I kind of see with the Good Brothers, his, you know, the OC and stuff like that. Like you, I don't know, you had to do something with these guys creatively. And, you know, right now, in any title picture in WWE, uh, the the World Heavyweight on Raw, and then you have him on SmackDown. I just, I don't know. I just don't see him. You know, I don't see him defeating Cody Rhodes. I don't see him any part of what happens with uh, you know the Bloodline and the Rock coming back to challenge Cody Rhodes for that championship belt at WrestleMania. And then I also don't see him you know feuding with the Judgment Day and Finn Balor. And then, you know, Damian Priest, or if Gunther wins, I don't see him fighting Gunther. Or if Brock Lesnar returns, I don't see him fighting Brock Lesnar. I think the best thing for AJ Styles is to probably wind up on NXT with the OC. You have Nee Chin there. You have uh, Gallows and Anderson. And who better to fight somebody for, uh, uh, to fight Nick Nemeth, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, other than one of the greatest TNA superstars of all time? AJ Styles, the phenomenal AJ Styles. AJ Styles had TNA on the map for the longest time. When I stopped watching TNA, I remember names like AJ Styles. So I definitely think in the future they're going to be doing something like that. A thousand and ten percent. So, you know, definitely love how AJ Styles is, uh, you know, 
going on. Hopefully, he fights somebody like Nick Nunez. All right, next in the news, we have Elias voicing his frustrations with WWE before he re- he got released. Obviously, this is a thousand and ten percent. Um, I kind of believe I I side with Elias here. Elias was one of those superstars that he was he was good inside the ring. He was big. He was strong. He was fit. He was athletic. He made a match actually worth watching. And as soon as, um, you know, all the young things kind of came in, much like I keep reiterating with Keith Lee, Alistair Black, Lars Sullivan, and on the girl side, you saw Ember Moon and, um, you know, people from NXT that get promoted. And to be honest, I just, I don't know. I just feel like at the same time, Elias definitely should have deserved a lot better. Definitely should have, uh, you know, definitely deserved a hell of a lot better, especially with the way everything's going right now. He definitely deserved a shot in WWE, wasn't really granted it. And, you know, there was a point where he was actually turning babyface, a thousand ten percent, and the people loved it. The viewers absolutely loved it. But, you know, lo and behold, and obviously under the Vince McMahon regime, didn't really kind of surface and stuff like that. You know, kind of crazy. All right, next we have WWE Hall of Famers are set to make an appearance at WWE SummerSlam. Uh, we have Rick Steiner and Kane. Honestly, what does that say about, you know, maybe Braun Breaker possibly defeating Sami Zayn for the WWE Intercontinental Championship? Not saying anything, not pointing any fingers, or not trying to conspiracy, conspiracy theory alert. But I just feel like it'd be awesome. I feel like it'd be kind of cool at this point. You know, you have your dad. Inside the crowd, your uncle, Scott Steiner, both of them are WWE Hall of Famers. I feel like right now, the Intercontinental Championship, you know what you're going to expect from the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. You know what you're going to expect from the WWE Undisputed Championship. You know what you're going to expect from the United States Championship. How about put the championship on a young superstar like Braun Breaker just to kind of see what happens? If Braun Breaker becomes the champion, I think there's more of an array of different storylines, a different super superstar promotions, you know, more than, you know, you have Sammy and I love Sammy's in and I think he's doing fantastic. You know, I feel like at WWE SummerSlam, you saw people like Bailey, Cody Rhodes and Sammy Zayn, you know, finish their story and win the championship. A lot of people say that they are boring champions. They're better chasers than championship holders, which I'm not completely. Uh, you know, disagree about that. But I just feel like for the Intercontinental Championship to kind of, you know, go totally sideways, be absolutely crazy. You're going to have to see something. You're going to have to see something give here. And especially if they want to make Damian Priest the baby face, they 1,010%. They need to bring a bad guy. They need to bring a real bad guy to fight and to have a championship. Kind of like what MJF does in AEW. You have Braun Breaker is going to break people 1,010%. Rapidly running out of time, so let's see if we can spitfire this. CM Punk reveals that he would have never, he would have never, ever, 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 ever made it to WWE if Vince McMahon was still here. And to be honest, that's, you know, not a surprise, Vince McMahon, you know. Not really much to say there, but, uh, you know. I kind of saw that coming. So Mercedes Monet claims the credit for this photo of Shane McMahon and Tony Khan that's got the wrestling industry, that you know, every single news media absolutely buzzing. People are saying, what's Vince, what's Shane McMahon doing there? What's good? Is Shane McMahon coming to AEW Dynamite? Is he going to wrestle it all, you know, all in? You know, what's going to happen with AEW and Shane McMahon? Is WWE hurt? Are they, you know, like, and all these things have just blown up from a simple gosh darn picture. What is the old saying? A picture is worth a thousand words. And, you know, everybody right now is absolutely buzzing. To be honest, I was thinking about doing a segment blowing up about, you know, uh, Shane McMahon possibly doing his thing in AEW. But, you know, don't want to jump the trigger too hard. Thousand ten percent, you know, kind of crazy. And lastly, we have Las Vegas securing their bid on WWE WrestleMania with, um, you know, with a little cash, with a little fat cash, the Las Vegas Convention Center, which is holding the autograph signings and the events and stuff like that before WrestleMania, gave WWE a $5 million grant. 
And, you know, also it helped with the UFC and the WWE's merger, you know, you know, still kind of contemplating and stuff like that. Obviously, when you think of Las Vegas, well, at least when I think of Las Vegas, I think of the UFC. I think of the UFC a thousand and ten percent. Not really the WWE, but I know how W how UFC out there, you know, it, it's big. It's extremely big, especially in uh in Las Vegas. They have the UFC performance center and stuff like that. So um yeah, honestly, guys, hey, thank you so much for tuning into my show. A thousand ten percent. Hope y'all are doing well. Hope you guys are having a great, safe night. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast. Brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Uh, remember, to, remember to Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show. Also, remember, remember to leave a positive, positive, positive chat here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity, 1,010%. Remember to follow us on Twitter, slash X, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook for more content and updates. And like I always say, if I haven't made you a wrestling fan, by now, we have a bunch of other podcasts. We have my boy Emran's podcast. Soccer podcast started in just six minutes. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We also have um, college football right around the corner with my boy Tommy, the GSMC college football, uh, college football podcast. We also have football right around the corner. The NFL starts tomorrow. The Hall of Fame game. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be dope. It's going to be great to see some NFL football. Uh, we have the Chip Shop Football podcast with my boy Manny. We also have the GSMC Football Podcast with Kenneth. We have GSMC Basketball Podcast with my boy Nelson. The GSMC Baseball Podcast with my boy Sam. Also, in terms of all these sports happening right now, and if you're a fantasy sports goer like I am, if you want to know who to draft during the season, if you want to know your stardoms, your sit-ums, your, your uh, flex, who you should have as your flex, 1,010% pay attention to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast with my boy, Chris Shepard, 1,010%. We also have sports, media, and entertainment. We have the Andrew Tate Podcast. Make sure you stay tuned and make sure you watch that. We also have TJ and Jeremy on sports in terms of, you know, just everything in terms of sports. So make sure you guys check out their podcast, 1,010%. I give you my guarantee, 1,010% or your money back. And I'm just kidding. It's It's free. The GSMC Sports Network, subscribing to that. It's 1,010% free. So what are you guys waiting for? So, all right. Be part of this GSMC Sports bloodline. All right. So, like, uh, you know, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. Hope you guys have an amazing Thursday. I will see you tomorrow. All geared up for an amazing Thursday. Thursdays, I kind of like to dedicate the episode to, like, you know, stuff other than WWE because I'm always chatting about WWE. So make sure tomorrow we're going to talk about AEW Dynamite. Tomorrow we're going to preview TNA Impact Wrestling, also Ring of Honor. Also on Thursday, every single Thursday, we're going to have our Thursday Superstar Spotlight of the Week. Who's it going to be? I don't even know. So make sure you tune into the show. It's going to be dope. So lastly, thank you guys so much. And hey, most importantly, stay beautiful.